Hey, welcome to Sailing Vertican. I'm Kim and my family and I help sailing cruisers to make the most of their live aboard lifestyle. Before I talk about making provisioning and cooking on a boat easy, I just want to mention a recent collaboration we did with Emily and Clark's Adventure and some other cruising channels. We all compared our food costs in different countries. You can check out that video and the videos from other cruiser boats here or in the link below. So did you know that there's a variety of ways to make provisioning and cooking on a boat easy? Surely you already know that getting food isn't straightforward. You have to get in your dinghy, you have to head to shore, you have to walk or take a bus to a grocery store, shop and then head back to the boat. It's usually a half day event and it's a real kicker when you forget something important like the milk or the bread. And finding the foods that you want is a massive hit or miss situation. I've spent months in foreign countries not being able to get basic things like tomatoes, celery, fresh milk, or any modern convenience foods like ready-made pizzas or the condiments that you love. Or I'll want to make a special dish knowing that I saw a certain product the week before and then when I return I never see it again. Of course there are then the actual difficulties of cooking. Boats only have so much cooking fuel, so you don't want to spend too much time using the oven. The stovetop and the oven are much smaller than what we're accustomed to. Only one pot fits on the top, and it's already hot on a boat, so adding more heat isn't ideal. So what can turn the labor-intensive task of provisioning and cooking into a breeze? Stay tuned. First, you need to realize that provisioning and cooking on a boat is not like how things work on land and in a house. Second, you need to create a system that makes life easy and then work that system. Today I'm going to share with you three ways on how you can make provisioning and cooking on a boat easier. You might be thinking that cooking on a boat is similar to camping. You crack open a can of beans and heat up some hot dogs, but if you're going to become a cruiser, you can't live on camping foods, nor do you need to. You also might think that you're just going to live on salads all the time because it's too hot to eat anything heavier. Well, that will last you a couple of weeks and then you'll want something more substantial. So not only am I going to show you how to make provisioning and cooking easy, but I'm going to show you how to make proper meals that are healthy, taste great, and are easy to cook. The first tip is to think of all the meals you like to eat on a regular basis. For us, we love turkey chili, spaghetti bolognese, pulled pork, chicken curry, any kind of tacos, steak, barbecues, and loads of local vegetables for dinner. And for lunch, we enjoy every kind of salad possible, in addition to soups and sandwiches. For breakfast, we eat breakfast burritos, eggs on toast, pancakes, or yogurt and granola. Based on what you know and love to eat, you can create a list of ingredients that make up your staple list. I separate my list into fresh, frozen, and canned. Due to very limited space on a boat, over time you learn how to balance what you keep fresh, what you freeze, and what canned items work really well. With your list, you can either keep it updated as and when you use ingredients or just update it before you head out to the store so that every time you shop, you bring your core list. I often update ours and give it to my husband, Simon, and then he can do the grocery shopping. Any extras needed or wanted, I just write at the bottom of the list. In most cases, you won't get everything on the list, but when you find something you've been looking for or you've been missing for a while, you know to buy several. Over time, you have a stock of core items. The important concept here is to start with what you know and love already. If you're going to live the dream, that means living the dream, not living off dried chickpeas and powdered eggs. The second thing to do that makes provisioning and cooking on a boat fun and easy is to spend a few hours after you shop to prepare meals and meal kits. When you're actively sailing, moving from one anchorage to the next to the next, or even sailing for a short two hour sail, it will tire you out. And a long day sailing can really take it out of you. The last thing you wanna do is cook. 
Another thing that happens as a cruiser are all the sundowner and cruiser events. If you want to meet people on the beach or invite them over, there's always someone around or even a group of boaters around ready and willing to have a few drinks while watching the sunset. These events are great, but for me, I get back to the boat and I don't want to cook. Furthermore, in the not so distant past, I got seasick all the time. I would prepare all our meals in advance so that anyone could just grab a burrito and pop it in the microwave or pull out a lasagna, put it in the oven. And it reduced my level of stress knowing that I was out of commission for the trip, but I also was able to eat and so was everyone else. Yes, when I get seasick, I like to eat. So let me give you an idea of what I make in advance and freeze. Just this week, I put in a pork loin into our slow cooker, created a barbecue pulled pork meal to freeze. While that was cooking, I made lasagna cups that are made to freeze. I then made a chicken fajita soft taco kit and a beef barley stew kit. The kits are not cooked, but the whole idea is that you just take them out of the freezer and pour them into the slow cooker, pour them into the pot. And by having these pre-made freezer meals and kits, it makes cooking on a boat so much easier. When we're anchored in a bay and haven't done much all day, other than swimming and exploring, I'm usually in the mood to cook food and use fresh ingredients and make something fun. But when I'm tired, I usually ask Simon to heat up one of our pre-made meals or a cook a kit. Depending on how much freezer space I have, I sometimes make double batches too. The main thing to understand here is that a few hours spent concentrating your efforts on meal planning will seriously pay off later in the week when you don't really want to cook. This means that meal planning and cooking truly become a breeze. The third tip to make cooking on a boat fun and easy is to learn about substitutions and using frozen or canned goods. I will tell you a story about this one. One of my favorite lunchtime meals is chicken salad or uh, chicken salad like on lettuce or in an avocado. For years, I would make this meal when I found a place that sold rotisserie chickens. Never did I think there was any other way. When COVID hit, we went to the grocery store and we stocked up on variety items. And one of those things that had a limit was canned chicken. I thought, who the heck eats chicken from a can? I, excuse me, I bought four cans just to see what all the fuss was about. I then decided to try and make my chicken salad. So it's mayo, cranberry, celery, seasoning, and chicken from a can. I couldn't believe how easy it was and how good it tasted. I now keep a stock of around five cans of chicken on board. It's so quick, easy, and tastes great. I've also discovered that canned spinach works great in recipes too, and you can get canned hummus and baba ganoush and all sorts of amazing things in cans. And we're in St. Martin right now, and they have duck in a can, scallop potatoes, and all sorts of unexpected options. It's fantastic. The same goes with frozen foods. I always have a bag of frozen broccoli, peas, corn, Brussels sprouts, because I know the chances of getting them fresh are low, and these veggies go into our core meals. The main thing to understand here is that if you balance your fresh, your frozen, your self-stable items, you can often create your favorite meals, stocking the ingredients in the space you have, and in some cases, it's, it's even easier. This is really key because there's only so much space on board and furthermore, you often can't get the fresh ingredients you want. Now you might be thinking that you'll just make a list of what you want, go to the grocery store, get what you can and you'll improvise and that you don't get seasick or tired. So you're happy to cook up something after a long sail. And that's when I would look at you and say, you haven't been sailing for very long, have you? Each anchorage and country you visit may or may not have anything on your list. I've had times where I wanted to make something specific and I couldn't get six out of the eight ingredients. So there's no improvising on that recipe. I've also had times where I made a list and forgot to put something essential on the list. That was before I had my staple list that I now use. And feeling in the mood to cook during or even after a long passage is definitely not a common occurrence. It might seem like these three tips aren't very groundbreaking, but I assure you that creating ingredient lists, being proactive with your meal preparation, and understanding what substitutes you can use, provisioning and cooking on a boat will really become easy. But if you wanna go one step further, you can follow our more comprehensive meal provisioning grouping checklist. I created a guide called Checklist for Sailors where you can discover more ways to create systems, 
checklists, and routines that help make your entire boating life easier. Not only does the guide have food-related checklists, but also cleaning lists, passage planning structure, sailboat maintenance routines, safety systems, medical, and more. What makes our checklist so special is that we've spent seven years testing, modifying, and perfecting them so that you don't have to go through the pain and expense that we have. Our checklist will help you to have a less complicated and more enjoyable boat life. They will also help you to save loads of money by being proactive rather than reactive. Click the link here or down below and get the full details on our checklist for sailors guide. We're currently offering the option to get the guide in word format so that you can customize the checklist specific to your needs. Here are some of the reviews we've gotten from our guide. And remember to head over to Emily and Clark's Adventure Channel to get an idea about how much food costs in different parts of the world. Click the link here to watch that now. That's it for this video. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Thank you. Bye.